This was a big moment for Natalie. The biggest in her career so far, for sure. The whole company had gathered in the reception hall of Pinnacle Fine Wines to celebrate her promotion and the million dollar deal she'd made for the firm. But her own mother was a no-show. True to form. To be fair, the drive from the city up to Archangel could be unpredictable in the afternoon. It was equally possible that Blythe Harper had completely forgotten that she'd promised to show up to celebrate her daughter's achievement. Natalie pasted on a smile and smoothed her hands down the front of her blazer, a tailored conservative piece she wore over the white silk pussy bow blouse she'd splurged on for the occasion. Meanwhile, she tracked the company owner, Rupert Carnaby, as he made his way to the podium at the dais, pausing to greet colleagues along the way. Then she glanced at the door, half hoping her mom would come dashing through at the last minute. The other half knew better. Natalie reminded herself that she was a grown woman, not some kid who needed her mommy to show up for a school event. Not that Blythe had done that either. Although she didn't consciously keep score, Natalie knew her mother had missed many things in her life. From her brownie investiture ceremony, to the California Mathletics Championship, to her graduation from college. There was always a reason. She couldn't leave the shop. A sales rep was coming in. She couldn't find a car to borrow. She had an event with a VIP author. All good reasons. The kind Natalie would feel petty for disputing. Whatever, Natalie thought, shifting from foot to foot in her fashionable but uncomfortable mid-heel pumps. It's fine. Her mom would have an excuse and Natalie would be fine with it. That was the way it always worked. And to be fair, her mother, who had raised Natalie alone, rarely had a moment to spare away from the bookstore. She'd run it almost single-handedly for the past 33 years, often lacking the wherewithal for backup help. Mandy McDowell, Natalie's coworker in logistics, milled past, a glass of wine in hand as she regaled a colleague with yet another story about her adorable but ill-behaved kids. Too late, Natalie realized Mandy wasn't watching where she was going. Natalie failed to step away in time, and Mandy's glass of wine sloshed into her. Oh my God, Natalie, Mandy exclaimed, her eyes wide with distress. I didn't see you there. Oh shoot, I am so, so sorry. Natalie plucked the white silk blouse away from her body. Great, she muttered, grabbing a napkin and blotting at the splash of red wine. Club soda to the rescue. Mandy's friend Cheryl bustled forward with a napkin and a bottle. Here, let me help. While Natalie held her blouse away from her also stained bra, Mandy and Cheryl dabbed at the large blot. I'm such a horrible klutz, Mandy said. Can you ever forgive me? God, you shouldn't. And today of all days, just as you're about to go up to the podium. It was an accident, Natalie conceded. Trying to keep her cool, trying to minimize the situation. Promise you'll send me the cleaning bill, Mandy said. And if the stain won't come out, I'm totally buying you a new blouse. Fair enough, Natalie murmured. She knew her coworker wouldn't make good on the promise. Mandy, a single mom, was perpetually broke. She always seemed to be scrambling to stay on top of her bills. Judging by her eyelash extensions and nail job, she didn't mind splurging on self-care. Yet she was always short on cash. Don't judge, Natalie reminded herself. People have their reasons. Mandy regarded her with dewy-eyed sympathy. Oh, hey, I thought your mom was coming up from the city today. Natalie gritted her teeth, then forced her jaw to relax. Yeah, not sure what happened. Traffic, maybe. Or it could be something came up at the bookstore. She always has a hard time getting away. Are you sure you told her this whole party is in your honor? She knows, Natalie murmured. Mandy was so very sincere, but her questions were not helping.